Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. We are excited. We took a break and now we are back. Woohoo! Yeah. And today I am really excited about this uh, podcast, this episode we are recording and we're streaming because it's one that's very, very needed. So if you are joining us, make sure you say hi, make sure you click and say hello, make sure you share, make sure you like, make sure you comment. Uh, we will be reading everything that you type. And even if you do it later, we'll still read it and comment. And if you have any questions, then we will try to do our best to answer them. So before I introduce my guest, um, I just want to let you know that all of these podcasts, these recordings go to our U to my YouTube channel. So follow the link. There's a link uh, in my bio. Click on that link and then it'll take you to YouTube and you will see all the episodes that are there. We have some amazing episodes that we have done in the past. We have some love stories. We have some business advice. We have some political comment. We have just different, you know, soul searching thing, themes that we've talked about. So I encourage you, if you have a YouTube channel, let me know. I will follow you. Hey, we're supporting each other. So if you have an account, I will follow you. Follow me as well. And we will grow together because we need more so, you know, sound, good quality content out there. Content that just not that not only keeps you entertained, but it helps you along the way, right? So let me go ahead and get started. And uh, I want to thank you for joining us. Make sure you comment and click replay if you've seen this later on. If you're seeing it live, comment as well. We'll be reading them. So here we go. Welcome to Muddy and Friends, where we dive into some great conversation and share practical insights that have made a difference in our lives. I'm your host, Maria. And before we begin, I want to make one thing clear. I am not an expert. I simply, I'm simply here to share what has worked for me and hopefully inspire you along the way. So if you are ready to explore new perspectives and explore different experiences that will and will here to give you tips and help you in your journey whatever that is then stick around and as we begin this great conversation and today we have once again jane jenkins she's done a couple of podcasts with me uh talking about mental health and we're so excited to have her once again and we've been trying to get together for a while now we finally did it we took a break but she is a licensed clinical social worker in New Mexico and a licensed minister and also a great friend. <laughs> so we are so excited to have you, Jade. Yay! Thank you. I'm very excited to be here again. It's always a good time. Hey, that's I want right. to kind of reiterate what you mentioned earlier that while I am a mental health professional, I am not your mental health professional. So anything that I share here is my personal opinion from my experiences and my knowledge as a therapist. But I encourage you for your own personal therapy, seek your own uh, mental health. And we're going to talk about that today. Exactly. So and with that, we have the, the theme for today for our conversation is how to choose a therapist how to choose a therapist. And let me tell you how um, I asked uh, Jade if we could talk about this because um, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to this person and she asked me for prayer and we talked about it and we prayed. And then this was like the fourth or fifth time we talk about it and we pray about it. So I finally said, you know what? We keep coming back to this and then you get better and then you keep coming back to this. How about if you, we take a different approach and in addition to the prayer, in addition to the growing, in addition to everything we do, you find a good therapist and that will help you uncover and talk these things through why this keeps happening to you or what is it that you keep doing or what trauma is it that you're dealing with? So let me let me take a moment here. I forgot the people on TikTok. So... Oh hey, TikTok. <laughs> All right. Hello, TikTok. Hey, hey, everybody. So, and then I was talking to her and she said, no, I, I don't believe in therapists. I don't think they're good. And so we started to talk about her um, ideas about what a therapist is and, and how misinformed she was. So mm -hmm. I said, let me talk to Jay. Let me talk to Jay so we can have a conversation about how to choose a therapist and the misconceptions about what people think that therapy is. All right. So are you in, Jay? 
Yep, I'm in. <laughs> so number one, one of the things is that I hear is therapy is only for people with serious mental health issues. And that couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> you don't have to be diagnosed with schizophrenia or bipolar, um, even depression, truthfully, to go to therapy. Um, therapy is not only for treating severe mental illnesses. It's also for simply seeking and support in life because life is stressful. Even if you haven't been through significant trauma, it's just life is stressful. There's a lot going on in our country right now that can oh, really yeah. in our world that can really stress people out or things going on at work or at home that you just need a neutral third party support. Talking to friends is one thing, but they're emotionally invested in your situation may not have unbiased, uh, yeah. an unbiased perspective. And so that's why having, you know, a therapist to talk to is great. Uh, no matter what you're dealing with. So is that, so it's also talk to somebody who has some skills, some yes. kind of training yes. to guide you through that talk, because it not only do you need somebody that can guide you through it and not say, okay, girl, let's go key his car or hey, yeah. girl, <laughs> let's go, let's go find somebody who'll take care of that. You know, that, that's yeah. okay. so you need somebody that, can, that has some kind of training, some kind of, mm -hmm. um, experience or like i said training to guide us through through all of that right so we have diana saying hi we have miss sally hello hi, everyone. These, these ladies are amazing so another misconception is that only crazy and weak people go to therapy so that's another misconception that only if you're losing you know you're crazy like you want to say hey i'm going to therapy because they're like oh they're crazy or like, oh, you can't handle your life on your own. Yeah, no, I mean, needing support from other people doesn't make you weak. You know what I mean? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sally. Um, we all need support. That's why we need friends. That's why we have friendships. That's why we connect with our families. We are uh, social creatures. We need one another. And so it's okay to need support when things are stressful and you know getting professional support is even better because you know um you're gonna get information that you may not necessarily receive from just friends and family but yeah no going to therapy it doesn't make you weak to me truthfully i i yeah. think that it actually is quite the opposite it takes a lot of strength and courage to to go get out there, admit that you're struggling with something and seek help from somebody. So I think it actually takes a lot of strength to go to therapy. And I know that in the past few years, we have normalized mental health issues and sure. we have normalized going to therapy and more people are actually being honest about going to mm -hmm. therapy and different things. So because it, it really helps, it really helps when you talk it out. And like you said, you're not crazy. You're not crazy. Actually, it's it's like a car. You get maintenance, you get oil changes. Absolutely. You so instead of waiting to get really bad, you say, hey, I, I think there's a little noise somewhere. So or let, just let, instead of asking a friend that doesn't know how to fix cars to fix yes, your car, exactly. go find a mechanic. <laughs> It's exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, get, yeah. get those nuts and bolts a little bit. So hi, Priscilla. Hey, Priscilla. Oh, so. She's like, oh, I'm so glad you're listening. So, and um, so let me, so let's go back to that. Another thing is that therapists give, we have the misconception mm -hmm. that therapists give advice and tell you what to do. I thought that myself. I thought that I would sit there, tell my problem and say, okay, well, say, three Hail Marys, one Holy this, and take, you know, a tea of whatever, and you'll be fine. Tell your husband X, Y, Z, and yes. it'll be a problem. Yeah. Tell, or tell me, tell me that I'm right and he's wrong. Mm -hmm. Tell me if I should leave him or not. Yeah. Which, um, and I'll tell you the re one of the reasons we don't do that is because the whole purpose other obviously finding support that's the purpose but also 
learning how to handle these things in a better way. You can, you know, our job is not to make someone rely on us for our answers to their lives. It's for us to help strengthen them and give them skills to be able to make their own decisions about their lives and make better decisions. Um, you know, decisions based on knowledge and understanding and of themselves, of mental health, you know, so really we're more there to kind of train you to make better decisions in a way, give you skills and um, information to help that. And, and we talk through it with people kind of sometimes just talking through their ideas and thoughts about something, you know, having someone to bounce that off of. A lot of the times people end up figuring it out themselves as they're just talking to me, <laughs> exactly. you know, exactly. and that's the best thing. Exactly. So, so it is, it is true that, um, so let's say I come and tell you, I have a, a marriage problem and I'm being, and I, I'm very stressed about it and I can't sleep. How would, what would be, you know, the, what would you do? Like, well, how would you handle that? If you don't, if you're not giving me a solution, do, what is it? How is it that if you can kind of tell me how it worked, how would it work? I mean, in, for my, like, a general perspective, I might talk about um, what the per what they think, what their idea of healthy and unhealthy relationship behaviors are. Um, how do they communicate with their partner? Are there better communication skills that maybe they could learn? Are there things going on in their relationship that they think are healthy but maybe are not? Um, and then, so you, help me, so you help me walk it through it. Yes, I you know and. And if in this specific scenario, if there is any sort of abuse going on, you know, providing some information on, hey, these are, this is kind of what the statistics say about these sorts of things and, and providing resources, you know, hey, this is a resource for uh, survivors of domestic violence. Um, they don't have to use those resources. Uh, obviously it's preferred if, they do, but my job is to provide the information and they have to make the choice. Correct. Um, correct. Correct. Unless it's with children and then I'm calling, I'm calling CPS. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> there, absolutely. There's no figure it out on absolutely. that one. That so, me. and that, and that's where you said, you just, you don't tell me what to do. Right. You just help me talk and, and you just kind of help me get to that, um, to that conclusion on my own self-discover, give me a safe space where I can release and talk about it and, and feel safe and not judged and all that. That is, that is very challenging for you. I'm sure that's very challenging for therapists. Can be, you know, and that's, it is part of our training to learn how to regulate your facial expressions and not react emotionally and to try not to pass judgment and just kind of, you know, um, but we're human, you know, uh, but no, at the end of the day, I mean, everybody's got their stuff. So, um, yeah. yeah. And do you, and you have listening skills, right? Like you develop, Active you have listening. Yeah. So what are those listening skills that, that you put in practice? Because I can't imagine that because I know I would, blah, 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 I, I would get there and talk and, and you have to kind of sort through all that to <laughs> listen between the lines and calm me down. Right. I have to rein myself in sometimes and like tell myself, you don't have to say all that. <laughs> like I do have to regulate sometimes and just kind of like, okay. But um, yeah. So Active listening involves um, a lot of reflecting. So they'll share with me what they're thinking. And then I basically reflect back to them what they just said to me in my okay. understanding. So like, so what you're saying is you feel X, Y, Z way because of okay. X, Y, Z. Or what I'm hearing you say is that this has happened. And so this is why you believe this, you know, and that allows the other person to either correct me. No, that's not what I meant. Or no, that's not actually how I feel or confirm like, yeah, actually that's right on. Um, so and we, yeah. And we have a question. Uh, Priscilla says, I have a question for you, Jade from, and if you can, if you need to answer this in a private matter, Jade, we, we can do that. We can, but if you can 
Uh, answer it right now. Go ahead and do it. It says, okay. I have, a, I have a question for you, Jade. From a therapist's perspective, how do you regulate after an overwhelming consult? And that's a fabulous question. Because even as a you know non-therapist, as a friend, sometimes conversations with friends can feel overwhelming. Um, for me, it depends. There's a, you know, it's a couple things. Sometimes I don't have a lot of time in between people. So if I just have a few minutes, you know, I might say a quick prayer, maybe walk around the, the building, not inside, not in the heat, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, walk around the halls for a minute, just kind of like decompress and regroup. Yeah. Or sometimes maybe message my supervisor or a colleague and be like, this just happened. Oof, I got to go into the next session, but who, you know, and just kind of like, because as therapists, we all, we've all been there. And so sometimes we can be there to support each other. Like, Hey, I understand. Like it's been one of those days, like take a moment. And if it, if it's, I've ne this has never happened to me before, but if it's absolutely like really bad, you know, I may delay the next session or, okay you know, something like that. That's again, not happened to me as of yet, but we definitely pr uh, do prioritize self-care because we cannot provide appropriate care to someone when we are not okay. Exactly. And um, Sally has a good comment. So is that true that even therapists get therapy? Oh, absolutely. I have a therapist uh, and I'm not ashamed of that. Yeah. Um, like we talked about, we need yeah. to, we need I to mean, think about it this way. Do, does your primary care doctor have a doctor? Yeah, I'm sure he does. <laughs> they not go to the doctor. Like if you are a therapist, I hope you believe in therapy and will seek it if you need it. And again, it doesn't mean that you're super like off your rocker. It's just, <laughs> and, uh, and therapists, I think, too, because we suffer vicarious trauma from the things that people tell us about what's happened to them. And it can be very stressful. So yeah. And we have, just to let you know, there's some ladies that are commenting in Spanish, um, like Darlene y Belisa, she's, ella está comentando en español, she's commenting in Spanish. So I'm putting them there and it's a lot what, what you're saying because she has experience as a therapist. So she's, she is agreeing with a lot of things that you're saying, just so you know, when you see that, but she understands English, but she's just commenting in Spanish, okay. so you know, what's going on. So thank you, Darlene, for, for, for your commentary. And yes, so, absolutely. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Cool. Bilingual, so she's bilingual here. Absolutely. That's awesome. So that is good to, I like what you said that doctors have their own doctors. I like that. I really like that. I'm going to, I'm going to put that in the back of my mind also. Another thing is that another misconception that I see, and if you can clarify that is that therapy is a never ending process. Is that true? Not at all. Not at all. Um, it, some, for some, it can be a long-term thing, depending on what, you know, sometimes People have significant layers of trauma that take a while to work through. Um, <clears throat> sometimes people are in an ongoing stressful situation, you know, that may take a long time to get through. Um, but then I've had people come where it's been a situational thing. Like I'm going through a divorce. They come for six months. They work through what they need to, and then they're good to go. And then if something happens in their lives down the road, they can come back. There's no. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's no like, why well, did therapy? So I should be better now. It's like, no, if you need it again, come back. Exactly. Yeah. Like a tune up, like an oil change, exactly. like you get checked every month. Something and new stuff. happened in life that you weren't expecting. And yeah. I am telling you, I wish that about three years ago, I would have been with the knowledge that I have now as how much a therapist could have helped me because mm -hmm. I struggled by myself, not having nobody to talk to, nobody to understand, nobody to be a sounding board for me. So I, I know I was in a bad place. I, I think I suffered more than I should have. Mm -hmm. And I had a therapist 
therapist to talk things through and tell me, hey, what you're feeling, it's okay. It's okay to to go through a divorce and not be okay. It's okay to go through cancer and, and just be not knowing what's gonna happen. It's okay, anxiety is okay, but let's work on this or figure this is, you know, this. And I, I mean, I, I am telling you the next thing I have, the next breakup I have, Jade, I am, you know. <laughs> I no more breakups, the next one's gonna stick. <laughs> yeah. so, and, and, that's, and that's a good question. Can you be a therapist for your friends? or no. Mm -mm. Tell me about that. You can't be neutral. You can't be unbiased. And that's what makes therapy work so well, is that this is a neutral third party. I have nothing to gain or lose by you doing whatever you're going to do in your situation. There is no consequence for me. I have no investment. Oh, I see. So yeah. I'm not going to try and steer you in a certain direction based on how I feel about your situation because I'm not involved. I'm not in your life. As a friend, you're probably going to feel very strongly one way or another. Um, I mean, even as a therapist, I do feel strongly one way or another, but yeah. it's not my job to tell you, like, you I, people have got to, you know, strengthen and uh, strengthen those muscles themselves. As a friend, I might be like, okay, girl, <laughs> but uh you know have you had to do that have you had friend? to turn have you had to turn people away because they want they're your friends close close friends and they want therapy have you had to turn them away um i have not had to turn away close friends i have had to kind of turn or not turn away but give alternate resources i guess you could say to okay. people at church okay. um even if, but because even if I'm not super close to you, I know you in a different setting. Oh, okay. Uh, and so that's what we call in therapy a dual but relationship. It, and it, don't doctors have the same thing that doctors can operate on family and they can, or <gasps> lawyers can? I don't know. Sometimes, <laughs> sure. Because it, cause it, it, like you said, if you know them really, really well, you're invested and they might say, well, I had this decision because, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I can see where you've had to set a boundary, set limits and say, okay, yeah. we'll with somebody else. So, so, I guess, I guess you can't be, so I guess you can't be my therapist, huh? You can have I cannot. I cannot. Yeah. Um, but you, you can refer me. I can. Yeah. I can. It, it's because another reason for that too is like, let's say you know me from somewhere else and you know things about me that maybe make you view me differently. Okay. Like as like even my therapist, uh, I, and I'll talk about a little bit later how I, why I, how and why I chose her, how I went through okay. that process. But um, you know, I, I'm a Christian. I chose her partially because she's also a Christian but I actually don't know what she believes doctrinally. I don't know a lot about who she is as a person. Okay. And that helps because when you do know those things, then you can pass judgment and you can be like, well, I actually don't like the church that she goes yeah. to. And now yeah. I don't know if I want to listen to what she has to say. Yeah. So having that neutral person that you don't really, you know, no, know yeah. all of that, it allows you to, you know, receive from them. And another question, another thing is another misconception is, is therapy only just talking, talking, talking the whole hour? No, it doesn't have to be. How's that? No. What other things can happen? Um, I mean, well, if you think about the fact that sometimes, you know, a lot of things that we deal with as Americans in our society is stress, very high. We have a very fast paced society. Um, and stress, anxiety. And so when you're dealing with those things, it might be good to learn some relaxation techniques. Sometimes we mm. do breathing exercises or oh, breathing exercise. Yes. Like I, or, know what I could use that. I could use a breathing exercise. I, now I can teach you breathing exercises. You can, I can do that. Can do good, good. That I can do. <laughs> can we do one at the end? Can we yeah, sure. Okay, so don't let me forget. We'll do one at the end. A breathing okay. exercise, you know. And um, so in therapy, not only you talk. How about um, I've seen in some shows where they have those uh, fake dolls and they hit each other or they play role play or Priscilla's excited. I think Priscilla's excited about the breathing exercise. <laughs> um, 
Well, for those using stuff like that, that's more play therapy used more with children. Although I personally believe play therapy can be effective with adults too, because we all got that kid inside of us that <laughs> kind of still needs to heal. But um, how about hitting objects? You know how is that good therapy? Will you go and smash stuff and? There is actually some mixed research on that. Um, I, I I have told clients who tend to punch the wall or punch things when they're angry, punch a pillow, get a punching bag and a boxing glove, punch something appropriately. <laughs> Although utilizing that method of aggression, you could say, yeah. to release that tension can then also promote aggressive behavior. Yeah. So it can, it can, you can, you can get used to hitting this and then you turn, keep going to the left and then hit somebody. Yeah. How about so, shock therapy? This might be old and uninformed, but is shock therapy still a thing? Like, it is. like in the movies, they shock you. Is that for real? Honestly, guys, this is it, it, electro so shock weird. therapy is still a thing. It's really? not as common. It's more for very treatment resistant. So unless you've gone through every medication you can possibly imagine, every form of other form of treatment you can possibly imagine, then electroshock therapy might be considered. And it's not exactly. as barbaric as it is like uh, Yes, because I'm movies. thinking they take those those metal spatulas and, and put, them put that thing in your mouth and, and, they're, and they're burn <laughs> you and then your eyes twitch and yeah and no like, ah, I, that sounds like a I don't know, like a horror no. film that I got one no uh, no I don't think so. No, so it's it's different. it's definitely more um civilized and <laughs> now um, but there's also, there's other types of therapy. So like I was saying, relaxation techniques, mindfulness, which is, you know, practice, the practice of being present, okay. using imagination and imagery to bring a sense of calm, like imagining a peaceful place. Sometimes I'll talk people through like a guided imagery, like imagine you're by a stream, take a deep breath, stuff like that. Um, oh, and then, I have a question. Yes. Oh, sound bath therapy. I can't say one way or the other on that because I really that? don't know a lot about it. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about it. Oh, okay, that. okay, okay. All right. My so assumption, unless uh, Priscilla, if you want to, if you do know more specifics about it and want to share, but from what I understand, it's kind of like aromatherapy. Like you have oh. sounds and like they have those bowls and they. Oh, kinda, kinda I see that. that. I see yeah. that. Like they um, have the. Okay. Yeah, I don't and know this, any this misty situation in the back and yeah. You know, and I personally don't know the research behind it, um, but I just even imagining it, I would think that it would be soothing and relaxing. I think every, um, everything helps, right? Yeah. But um, I saw someone was throwing out some different therapies, art and music yes. therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. These are all different. CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy is a talk therapy. Yes. So it is mostly talking. Um, there's also uh, EMDR therapy, which I do. Um, Ooh, what's that? For eye movement desensitization and reprocessing oh, therapy. That? That's so, now that sounds, so, interesting. that sounds interesting. Yeah, because I, I focus mainly on trauma, okay. sexual trauma to be specific, mostly with women. It's kind of my niche. Yeah. Um, but I do work with male victims as well and, um, and other forms of trauma. But EMDR is, uh, it was actually researched to treat, um, combat veterans with PTSD. What, is, what is, does the MDR stand for? EM, so eye movement. Oh, oh I, okay. Desensitization and reprocessing therapy. So it takes research about the nervous system and the brain and how the brain functions with trauma. Um, the brain, because tr we experience trauma in our whole nervous system. That's why if, let's say you've been in a car accident or something and you see the car that you were in an accident or like the wow. same type of car and you get like that feeling it's yeah, because yeah, your yeah. nervous system remembers that experience and oh, so wow. the eye movement desensitization and reprocessing it uses what's called bilateral stimulation so they use either eye movements so there's a light that you follow back and forth it is not hypnotism this. Oh, okay. That's what I would think. Okay. Hypnotism. Okay. okay um, either the eye movements or we have these handheld 
like little handles that buzz back and forth, like vibrate back and forth. And it's creating bilateral stimulation. So it's causing both hemispheres of the brain to communicate. And it helps literally move the trauma through your nervous system wow, to that's reprocess it so you no longer feel triggered. It'll, um, and you don't talk. Like I, there's a little bit of talking where we set up the memory in a specific way. They have an image of that memory and a negative belief. I tell them to think about that. And then the eye, they follow with their eyes for about a minute not saying anything. And then I check in with them and the brain does it on its own. So I'll check in wow. with them for like, wow, I just realized that I was a child when this happened. It couldn't have been my fault. I was a kid. Then you let them do it again. And their brain just starts to work it out on its own. You don't have to say anything. It is the coolest thing. Wow, <laughs> and I have gone through EMDR as wow. well. So personally. there's different types. There's different types of that. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Cool okay. Stuff. So so let's let's talk about uh, another one that mm -hmm. we talked about that it's never ending process. It's not. And that doesn't have to be not only talking. There's other things that we can do. Right. And any. Oh, and one that I was going to tell you that therapy is only for young people that when you're old, you know, that that are you too old to have therapy? Like, no, like In fact, I, I've, I've talked to people that want to talk better and they're like, no, just don't even have a therapy. I mean, I'm too old for therapy. There's no need for that. They're, I'm never going to change. Is that no. no, I love my older clients. My oldest client was 83 and she, I just absolutely loved working with her. It doesn't matter how old you are. We carry things that are yes. painful. And um, a lot of times with my older clients, they just need companionship and just getting to talk about what's going on in their families and, you know, how they feel about aging and, all, you know, their body functions breaking down. That's a hard thing to go through. And wow. so absolutely, therapy is for everyone. Absolutely. Good, good answer. Okay, so now let's let's move to the idea of when you, okay, so you decided, we decided to go to therapy. We decided, okay, this is something I want to do. I'm going through some things. I could really use somebody. So everybody stay tuned. Whoever stays tuned, just remember that at the end, we're going to learn some breathing exercises. So just stick with us, okay? Just stick with us. So what, here are some things, some tips that will help you choose the right therapist. And Jade is gonna help us talk about it. Number one, we need to identify our needs. What is it that we need? And then therefore that will help you decide what kind of therapy you need, right? Yeah, absolutely. Going into therapy, it's important to have a goal. So what are you in therapy for? Are you in therapy to process your trauma? Are you in therapy to learn healthier, how to have a healthy relationship or better communication skills. Um, because yeah, as a therapist, we're going to ask you, what is your goal? What are we going to be working toward? Because okay. yeah, so, so definitely. If tell, so if I tell you, okay, I get really stressed. Uh, we have to do podcasting. I just go, sometimes I, I hyperventilate and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know why I'm so stressed. Um, and I tell you, oh my God, I just get in this mindset and, and I have to talk myself, how, you know, but I do it, but I just get so anxious. So you would help me kind of go through that, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, not, not you because you were friends <laughs> and, you can, you know, whoever is, you know, a, ther a different therapist. Yeah. But basically the, I mean, your goal in that scenario would be to learn better coping skills to reduce anxiety. Exactly. Simple. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So you, so we identify our needs. So when we, uh, we say, okay, my goal is to learn how to manage my anxiety. So the days that I do the podcast, so I'll relax. Okay. So that's, that's one thing. Number two is we seek recommendations and do the research, right? To find a good therapist. So what can you, what can you say about that? Well, and that's exactly how I found mine. Um, in fact, I actually asked my supervisor because my supervisor happens to also be a Christian. And so I personally wanted someone who was also a Christian because I can't talk about anything in my life without involving God. Yes. He's a part of all of it. And exactly. so I needed someone who I could express 
those things too that wasn't going to be like she says she's talking to god we need to paint slipper you know what i mean um so yeah um so i asked my supervisor and he recommended a few colleagues of his that he knew from his previous job and i looked up their bios and everything and read and i chose my therapist because in her bio she mentioned that she had a degree in Christian counseling from Grand okay. Canyon University. And oh, so, good. Like, okay, so she knows she's not going to be freaked out by me talking about God all the time yeah. and him talking to me and Correct. all of that. So that I knew. And, and I, you know, I even still from the bio, you can, you can still meet the therapist and, and not quite feel that connection. Correct. And that's the second thing. Consider capability and rapport. Is that okay? Or do you just, whoever they send you, that's it. And you're stuck with that person. No, not at all. No. In fact, even clients that come to me, I tell them, if you don't feel connected with me, tell me and I will transfer you. And there is no issue. Like, because it, it just, it, it does not work if you don't feel comfortable enough to be yourself with that therapist to share the true raw ugly things that yeah. you don't really yeah. want anyone else to know like yeah. if you don't feel that because that's what that space is for if okay. you're not feeling that safety and that um comfort in that therapeutic relationship it's okay move on find someone else break up with your therapist we will not be mad Exactly. At least I, I'm not because I'm like, hey, I want you to get what you need. And if I'm not the right fit for you, I am not mad. That is totally and, fine. And Sally says you should have a good connection with your therapist. It's I like with that. your doctor. Like you can find a good doctor. Oh, yeah. and you're like, oh, that, I know that doctor is a little too abrupt. And then you find a doctor that is like a little bit smoother, has bed, better bedside manners. And it's more, you know, it'll right. a little bit, you know, and then you and then you don't like that type of doctor and you say i want a doctor that boom tells me like it is because i don't got time you know so you just gotta find right. the, exactly. <laughs> you gotta find the right one yeah. okay and also do you need to verify credentials and licensing or do you take your word for it their word for it that's a great question actually um and i personally have never fact checked <laughs> you know i've never like because you can for example if you want to know if I really am a licensed clinical social worker in New Mexico, you can go to the New Mexico Social Work uh, Board of Examiners online and you can do a search on my name and it'll pull up my license and my license number. Wow. Um, so you can, you can do that. Now, usually when, when you're picking a therapist and they have their info out there, they'll put their license uh, and there's so many different licenses in therapy. I'm an LCSW, which is a clinical social worker. There's LPCC's licensed professional uh, clinical counselors. There's LMFT's licensed marriage and family therapists. Wow. There's LMHC's licensed mental health counselors. There's um, LA, there's LADAC or LADAC, which is licensed alcohol and drug addiction counselors. There's all wow, kinds of that. So, mm -hmm. so if I'm going to have a marriage problem, or if I have a, a drug issue, then I need to find a therapist that specializes in that. You can. Uh, the way I describe it is, for me, I'm a general practitioner. I'm like an internal medicine doctor. Oh, okay. I can treat a broad range of things. I can yes. treat the general stuff. I can treat substance abuse. I can treat. That, Sally is a pharmacist. Sally is a pharmacist, so she says, "Who can prescribe and who can?" I didn't know what that. Not was. I. I cannot. Wow! Uh, I didn't know that. You I have to, oh. No, you have to have a, a a PhD or an MD to mm. prescribe. So, people who can prescribe are obviously psychiatrists because they have a medical license. Um, there are nurse practitioners that can prescribe. There are clinical psychologists. They can wow. prescribe because they are PhDs. Well, there's they clinical psychologists who do the prescription part of their education can prescribe. Um, they do have to do a, a, sp a specific addition to their education to be able to prescribe. Um, but just a regular therapist is not going to be yeah. able to prescribe. And also psychiatrists who do prescribe don't often do therapy. 
which oh, really? is all the time. My psychiatrist, no, our psychiatrists do not do therapy at all. I didn't know. Then what is it that they just, I, how come yeah. I'm confused? That, their specialty is meds. Oh, you know what I mean? And I think they can, maybe certain psychiatrists can provide therapy possibly if that's part of their education. Well, I, did, well, I am learning so yeah. much here. I mm -hmm. am learning so much. I am. Thank you yeah. so much. I, you see, we're <laughs> uncovering all these things that, that, and again, all of these things, um, are here to help you. We are, I'm not an expert. We are not an expert in any kind of way. We're just sharing information, what has worked for us, what little we know and stuff. And, and Sally says, um, they prescribe, but, uh, but not give therapy. You're right. right. Yeah. Sally knows she's, she's a pharmacist. She knows all the secrets. She, mm -hmm. I like her cause she has access to meds. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was my best friend. Just kidding, just kidding. You know, and actually that does kind of bring something that I'd like to mention is that you don't have to get on medication when you go into therapy. You also don't have to have therapy in a lot of places to get medication. Oh. However, it is recommended if you are getting medication to get therapy as well. Sally because put legal drug meant, dealer. Legal <laughs> drug dealer. Sally, don't put that stuff. You're gonna give my love. Bring in those You're gonna get <laughs> um, Yes, go ahead. But, uh, like at our clinic, we do not provide medications without therapy. Uh, there are oh, other wow. clinics who do, but because the medication is not the answer. It can help to reduce some of the intensity of your emotions or help you, um, <laughs> silly, just kidding. Um, it, it, but it's really the medications are meant to assist with therapy. Oh. Can you go like, to a therapist and a psych and a psychi and a psych psychiatric at the same time? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Um, you know, they don't like at our clinic, we have our doctors are we're all in the same building okay. so we can coordinate with one another you know our patients that are with the doc you know have med management are all have therapists they have to oh wow and so if there's something going on with their symptoms that's wacky i can let their doctor know like hey i know you have them on this medication but they're still showing these symptoms you know just letting you know so we can coordinate now um you may have a psychiatrist in a different clinic and a therapist somewhere else, and that's fine too. You can always sign releases of information for them to coordinate if needed. Um, but yeah, I, I think that uh, you know, medication it can be helpful, but it's not it's not going to fix everything. Correct. Like I said, you have to get to the root of the problem. You have to talk about you it. You do have to do the work, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you have what? to do therapy what? is work. It's then, not yeah, just coming and venting. It is talk, not just coming and venting. Talk <laughs> about that. Talk about that, that it is work because I'm assuming I'm going to talk for 20 minutes. You're going to charge me, you know, $1,500, give me some pills and I'm good <laughs> and done. I'm That's new. a good therapist if they're charging $1,500 for a session. <laughs> they oh, better have solved your problem. Yes. Um, no. Uh, it's so a no, work in progress, like Sally you, said. Yeah. You can vent to anybody. You can vent to anyone. Like you don't need a therapist for that. There, you know, and I will say, sorry if this stings for anyone out there, but if you have, if you do just kind of go through therapist after therapist after therapist and like, no, nobody works, nobody helps, maybe take a look in the mirror. Yeah. There might be a common denominator in that equation yeah. because um, now sometimes you have to, go through a couple therapists to find the right one. Totally understandable. Correct. But I've had clients who've been in therapy for 19 years and have gone through 37 therapists and say nobody has helped them. I'm like, Oh my God, then they're the problem. I'm like, mm, have you helped yourself? So yeah. Uh, so it's work. You've got to look inside. You've got to acknowledge and recognize some things about yourself that might be uncomfortable. You've got to, it's like, going to all kinds of, it's like going to 10 different gyms and complain that none of them 
work and you don't lose weight and you don't and, but you're weight. also not lifting the weights when you get in there <laughs> correct um jade jade has a question um and again Please. if you can answer it right now you can if yeah, not, <laughs> priscilla has a question so she says, jade when i visit my therapist after my consult i feel exhausted why would that be oh there's a bug in there mm, i guess i it, I would think You're doing the work, right? Well, I would think it could be a few things. Either, yeah, you're really working through stuff, and it is it does take energy, and so yeah, and maybe you need to kind of have like a little self care routine after your sessions. Like, okay, I just had session; it was really heavy. I'm exhausted. I'm gonna have my iced coffee now and listen to a worship song. You know what I mean? Like something to kind of help re regulate yourself. But um, it could also be other things like maybe, again, maybe the therapist isn't a right fit. Maybe they're not reaching you in the way that is helpful for you. But that's something you, you'd have to evaluate for yourself. And also, that might be something you might want to mention to the therapist. Maybe they're not yeah. aware, you know, like I'm feeling really heavy after every session, like, and maybe there's something that the therapist can do to kind of adjust and and figure out, like, what is it that we need to adjust to kind of make the experience a little more comfortable or pleasant? So good yeah. answer. Good. Good stuff. Good stuff. So you have shared so much. Oh, my goodness. This this has been invaluable information. And hopefully I want you to comment. Please comment. Let us know. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of comments, but let me know how has this helped you. Make sure you share, you like, and thank you for everybody for commenting. Uh, Darlene and Sally and everybody watching. I really appreciate you guys. So let's get into that. Oh, I'm so excited. We're gonna learn. We're gonna learn a little bit of breathing techniques here that she's um one more comment there. Let's put that there. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Claro que si se puede sentir exquisito porque estás confrontándote con ella misma. Yes. And Sally says, thank you. Great topic. Thank you, Sally. Okay. So is everybody ready? We're going to get ready to do a little bit of breathing technique. So what is it that we need? What, what do we need? What do we need? What do we need? So there's a lot. There's a couple things. One of, um, so I'll kind of share two, two different techniques that you can kind of use together. Okay. So one is to count with your okay. breath. Um, there's different methods, four, 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 five, six. Okay. I personally, am, so I like to inhale to the count of four and I'll count. Oh, are we gonna do this? Are we? Yeah, I'll, I'll explain it first and oh, then we'll gonna, go. Okay, because I, I was ready to, I was ready. I was, ready, I was like, yeah. Priscilla said, I'm ready. Sally said, Sally says, she's, Sally's saying, <laughs> hold on, where did Sally go? She said, let's do this. So we have a lot of people ready. We're going to do this live. Woo yeah. right. So I like to inhale to the count of four and then hold for two and then exhale for six. I like the ex personally, I like the exhale to be a little longer than the inhale. Um, the other thing is you inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth, kind of blowing out. Um, one of the reasons that you pause, like inhale, pause, and then exhale is because like, let's say someone's having a panic attack. They tend to start breathing faster. Yes. So the counting helps to regulate your breathing again and help bring yeah. your nervous system okay. back to calm. Okay. The, the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to teach you belly breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. I don't know how so, that, that's a long word, but I'm ready. <laughs> Basically, let me, it's let me take my watch off. I feel like I need to get comfortable. <laughs> yeah, let me take my earrings off. I don't know. Take I just, your earrings off. <laughs> okay. All you do is you know put your hand on your belly. I let me see if I hope this isn't too awkward. Sorry, everyone, okay. but I'll turn to the side. Okay. 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 You put your hand on your okay. belly. Okay. And okay. when you inhale, you push your belly out like you're in, like you're blowing up a, up a balloon. So inhale. And then when you exhale. Oh, I see. I see. And then inhale. And so okay. the reason is a lot of times we inhale into our chest and then exhale. What the belly breathing does is it kind of 
massages the diaphragm and it helps to um, activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which helps. That, I, mean, I didn't know what that was. The, <laughs> almost like you say parasympathetic, parasympathetic ner nervous system. I, did, I had to look that up. <laughs> so, okay, so we'll do, let's, let's do three belly breaths. Okay. Um, so if everyone's ready, we're ready. Hold on. Let me, let me make sure. Okay. Put, okay. Let's practice the breathing technique. Did I just spell it right? Okay. I got it spelled correctly. Yeah. I think so. Ah, who cares? Okay. <laughs> so place your hand on your belly. Okay. This is, we have to stand up or can we do sitting down? You don't down? have to. No, no, no. You can do it sitting down. Okay. We're, I'm ready. I'm ready. Go ahead and put your hand on your belly. I'm so excited. Okay. And inhale through your nose on, go ahead and inhale now. One. Oh, yeah. two, three, four, and hold, two, three, and then exhale through your mouth, two, three, four, five, six, then you're going to inhale again, one, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, and inhale one more time, two, three, four, hold, two, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to practice that. I'm going to go trying to practice because I, I, I've lost count in a couple of them, but I do feel more relaxed though. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's different when someone else is counting for you. It can be kind of weird, but you can, um, yeah, just do it. On. You don't have to use the same ratio. If you don't like exhaling, you can do four to four. You can do, again, like there is a f inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four. But I feel like that's a long time to hold my breath. <laughs> like, you know, it's you just you it's so you natural. Can. Yeah. <laughs> so I, that's why I only hold for two, but but yeah, that's the idea, basically. Wow. And the next one, what's the other one that you said? No, that I, that was both of the, that I was the one. See, I'm, so I'm so the counting. For more, I'm ready for more. Yeah, the counting and the belly. Extended. Okay, let's do one, one last time. One last time. Okay. One last time. Let's do it. All right. All right. Go hand on the belly. Put my hand on my belly. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and inhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Two. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. And inhale, two, three, four, hold, two. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. I'm ready. Nice and relaxed. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Jade, so much for being with us. And let me just review. I like to recap at the end because we've talked to, you know, so much um, on, on different things. So let's just review real quick. We talked about some misconceptions about therapy. Number one, therapy is only for people with serious mental health, that is not true. Only crazy and weak people go to therapy, that's not true. Therapists give advice and tell you what to do, that's not true. Number four, therapy is never ending process, that's not true in every case. Number five, therapy is only talking, not the truth. She, Jade explained it, rewind it. So, and then tips that'll help you choose the right therapist for you. Number one, identify your specific needs. All right. Number two, seek recommendations and do the research. Like Jay was saying, consider compatible compatibility and rapport. That's very important. You know, you don't have to be stuck to one therapist. Mm -hmm. Choose one that's good for you. Verify credentials and licensing. And Jade went into the specific details. Make sure you rewind it. Watch this again. Take it, uh, advantage of initial sessions. And we didn't talk about that, but mm -hmm. money, there's resources, right? There's a, there's different prices and there's different things that you can do, right? Yes. And, right. You know, I work in a community mental health clinic, so we take people regardless of 
whether you have insurance or not. And there are places like that here in El Paso. And then you can also go the private pay way as well. All right. Well, Jade, thank you so much for being with us. It's like, it's always, it's a lot of fun. Everybody make sure you like, you share, you comment. Um, all this episode will also be on YouTube. Please go to YouTube. We're trying to grow our account over there. That's why we're doing these. So your support means so much to me. When you go click on the link on the bio, go to the YouTube and just, or you can just look for my name, Maria Travieso, and then the podcast will be there. Make sure you follow. It does so much great when you support. Amen. So uh, I said, amen, like we're in church. <laughs> right (laughs) so uh sally says have a good night thanks again and priscilla says thank you ladies lots of loves and And don't forget everyone if you are a loved one or having a mental health crisis doesn't have to be suicide it can be any anxiety anything you can call 988 24 7 that is our national mental national mental health and suicide hotline please do not hesitate to call if you are in need any time of day or night. Thank you so much, Jade. Stick around so we can talk a little bit afterwards. But And again, everybody, thank you so much. You have a great, 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 great night. Bye, everyone. And God bless you guys. Bye.